how do you assess your, your performances? Um, I'm pretty disappointed. I definitely wanted to be better. Um, I am learning a lot <laughs> about patience throughout this. Um, it's tough, you know, I've, I've trained really, really hard the past seven months. Uh, and was definitely hoping it would show up a little bit more, um, and it didn't right now. And so I think just moving forward, you know, Jack is amazing, and he always look at me and be like, you know, we're in it for the long haul, and long term, it's two years. That's what matters, and so that's what we're going to keep fighting for, and I'm just going to do my best until then. So um, we see a few people said like, so what? What happens today? These two years is what matters. <laughs> Is it easy to see that bigger picture, or is there a part Good race of that here in the C-File. Final 15 meters, great shot. Of course, they think that's what everyone wants. Like, lead. You look at Allison Schmidt tonight, and I mean, I am so inspired by that, and that was incredible what she was able to do and how quickly she was able to do it. But I think with that, I have to be really Isabel careful Rogers. not to compare myself to them, to get the most courage with where I am right now. Um, so in that sense, it is easier to see the bigger picture. Uh, hey, I know, like, I've got time. 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 The only one who's yeah, you know, no, got, it's, got some time here to. It's so different. Um, the four year cycle, a lot of people look at it and it's very concrete. And you know, they think there's a certain way to do it. But you look at athletes in the past and take Michael Phelps, for example. You know, going into 2016, he was, he was at nationals, you know, the summer before 2016 Olympics. And that's probably where I'm going to be. So it's just a matter of doing what's best for you. And I would have loved to qualify for a team, obviously, this summer and next summer. Um, but now I'm just going to look at that as more time to train, more time to, to focus, and to just get as, as good as I can. We, we saw you especially yesterday, just so happy to be back, and you, you can tell you've really As I'm like choking back tears now. <laughs> but, you've been, but it's really meant a lot to you just to, to be here, to be in this environment, see people you haven't seen in a long time. So what's this, this whole, these two days, obviously a lot of emotions. Just kind of take us through it all of it. Yeah, you it's been a lot. So I think, obviously, the thing I was most looking forward to is just seeing everyone. I haven't seen these people in two years, and they're like my family. So being here and just to see everyone was so special. And it reminds me a lot of why I do this and how special the people that God has found in my life through swimming and through this sport. Um, just getting up and racing and again being inspired. Like, this meet is one of the fastest I have ever seen. And so. That really motivates me going back and training and realizing that every single swimmer in this country is stepping up their game right now and I'm gonna have to do the same. So it's been it's been a lot of emotions. Like she said, I've been happy, I've been super disappointed, but you know what, it's it's swimming and I think you know we all experience those emotions on some level and um, just kind of taking the time to process them after this and then getting back to it. Schmidty talked about how she had been thinking, you know, if I don't make it, I don't make it. I'm still the same person. Is that something yeah. that, that you kind of have to think about? Like, you know, I didn't do anything wrong. Like, this is still it's just something I do, and it doesn't. It's, it's not going to affect me like long term. Yeah. You know, this wasn't the meeting. No, a hundred percent. And I think, you know, I think about that long term a lot when I'm looking at goals and looking at you know 2020 and thinking, okay, so what happens if you go through the next two years and you don't make it? Like, what happens if you get that far? You trained two and a half years in some of the most like grueling training circumstances like what happens if you get there and you don't make it and every time I told myself I would a hundred times rather be sitting in Omaha in 2020 having not made the team knowing that I tried rather than you know looking back on these past two years and always thinking what if so regardless of what happens whether I'm even you know remotely close to even having a chance to making the team or 20 or not I'm gonna fight my ass off to do so and that's, that's what I'm going to be most proud of myself for and that's what's going to define who I am. Weird. <laughs> I was like packing up all my caps and goggles and I didn't put a nose clip in and I was like, this is like really emotional. But I think it's good. Um, I don't think my backstroke is anywhere near where it needs to be right now and so I don't think for, for my confidence or self-esteem it would have been good for me to go out there and and not have a swim that I was happy with. Um, so that's definitely going to be something Jack and I are going to be focusing on moving forward. But he really just kind of had to do what we had to do the past seven months to just really get my base up and my endurance up. 
and then hopefully we can be a little bit more specific moving forward in terms of events and strokes. Do you need the shoulder surgeries to that play It's been a little tough. Um, my shoulders are definitely still the most painful with backstroke, which has definitely kind of impeded my training there a little bit. Um, so we're just going to see moving forward. I had a couple of cortisone shots before coming into this meet, which really, really helped. Um, but, you know, again, it's something we have to manage. Um, I, can, I can still be in a good amount of pain on any given day. So something where we're working our best and, and just managing. But we have the most incredible coaching staff in Georgia. And if I tell them something's hurting, they're like, hey, let's do this instead. And they'll totally make changes. So I still have an amazing workout in. So I'm very grateful for that. The goal is to have fun. When I was younger and coming up in the sport, you know, a lot of people thought it was an act, but uh, you guys know <laughs> probably more than most that it, it wasn't. Um, and what I loved most about swimming was my love for swimming and how much I truly enjoyed doing that. And so getting back into it and maybe not necessarily having that same love for it, you know, winning was always fun, but it wasn't why I did the sport. So now getting back Racing into it, the back half now and lane four. And really Jake Foster, Mason Manoray is a slight lead. Over here in one and two, that's Tommy Cope and Connor McHugh. Let's see who's got the lead here at the 150. I think, you know, a lot of things. It is Tommy Cope with 138.41. Not even realizing I was doing it, and then having that taken away was really, really tough. But I think I'm in literally the best possible. Now the guys dig in for the finish here in the C final. Moving up is McHugh again in lane two. Good speed by Foster there in four. The seventh year old out of Mason Manor Rays, edging front of the field here. Babinet closing well in lane three. And in for the win, it will be Jake Foster, 213.21. Um, I'm going to be very honest. There were a lot of days when getting out and going to practice. Nice round of applause for the, the, the guys in the C final. Next up, D final. I feel worse about it and more guilty led to that like spiral of emotions and um, those like negative feelings for myself or not being able to, to motivate myself to go do something like that. So again, working through that and trying to go from that place of how I felt about swimming to trying to love it again has been quite, quite the journey. So 